Nowadays, people escape to the Bahamas, like here in Exuma, for relaxation. In the 18th century, they escaped to Exuma for completely different reason. We'll show you today in a taste of history why. Today, we're featuring recipes that are famous in Exuma. We're starting with a conch salad, making conch fritters, a fish fry, crab and rice, and the famous guava duff to bring you a Bahamian taste of history. The end of the American Revolutionary War was made official with the Treaty of Paris, signed by Benjamin Franklin and John Adams. Along with that settlement, Britain agreed to cede East and West Florida back to Spain, and the French gave the Bahamas back to the British. For Dennis Roll, a British loyalist and plantation owner in Florida, it was clearly time to leave. The British were no longer welcome there so his government encouraged Roll to relocate his entire plantation to the uninhabited island of Exuma in the newly reacquired Bahamas. That's when Roll's troubles and that of his slaves really started. He came to Exuma in 1784. He left South Florida with 152 slaves, with only 42 surviving the trip. What did they attempt to go here? Well, the first attempt was cotton, because cotton was the big money maker at that time. But because of the soil, cotton didn't survive. So they turned the grain, guinea corn and peas, which can grow in abundance. Although Exuma is a beautiful island, it is also a narrow volcanic outcropping with porous, sandy soil. And the island is surrounded by salt deposits, which wash over the soil with each crashing wave. So in other words, they didn't do their research before coming here. It was just kind of like, pick up, come here, and hope for the best. Exactly. When the loyalists left, and these slaves were left on these lands, they had to fend for themselves. One problem still exists today. That problem is, who is the owner of the land? As there are no documents given to the occupiers of this land. When Lord John Lord Roll died, he left in his will. Whoever inherited his land should take on the name of Roll. My name is Wilfred Roll. Merrily Roll. I am the son of Anvil Alexander Roll. I'm Karen Roll. My name is Ardnell Roll. And every person took on the name of Roll, saying now, we are the owner of Roll's land. Sure, you know, I'm so intrigued with the many recipes for conch that are available throughout the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. But it's more intriguing even that I'm going to get a recipe that's like hundreds and hundreds of years old because it's your mother's, your grandmother's recipe hand me down. Straight from the family. That's why I want you to make it for me. I want yes. you to tell me exactly how it's done. I, I know by reputation that you're one of the best conch salad makers in Exuma. Is that correct? You could say that. You could say <laughs> that. Show me what you got. Okay. So we start off with our queen conch. It has a lot of water in it. So what you want to do is drain it, kind of drain it out. Now this is the opening. This is where you take the count out and open it. We call this the conch beater. Kind of want to just probably give it like two, three taps. Just take a knife and slightly just push down, pull the conch out. First step, kind of want to cut it off of the bad skin here. I've done it a few times. I yes. Can't, I, I, I can't tell. You got it down. Beautiful. All you're doing is taking all the slop off it. Mm -hmm. Always rinse it off because it's kind of slimy. Because what that does is actually causes the knife to slip and you'll cut yourself. Cut your finger. Right? You got it. Don't yep. cut yourself. Not at all. Now what you want to do is always keep it clean. Make sure. So Sarah, now you 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 chop the kung up mm -hmm. and you say you like bigger pieces. Bigger pieces. Makes sense. So you more get more kung. to get more flavor. Yes, yeah, definitely makes sense. more kung. Right. So what I need you to do is help me with the onion. I will certainly will. You put this in a bowl, right? Put everything in a, a bowl. bowl. Okay. And you can cut the onion for me. Anything for you. Dice it. <laughs> how, how, how do you want to dice? dice fine it, dice? Yes, very fine dice. 
no big chunks. Yep. What I said to you is I was so lucky that I was able to get a couple of Exuma onions. Mm -hmm. Because you know the Exuma onions are some of the sweetest in the Bigger world. Bigger and sweeter. They're better right. than Maui, better than Vidalia, better than Oso. So it's unbelievable. So we're lucky. And uh, the flavor is just really great. So Excellent. let me show the onion for you. I've done this a few times yeah, too. Yeah, look at <laughs> okay. And we can start off with tomato. Yep. Now you know, the other thing that's intriguing, that when I did all the research on mm -hmm. Exuma, when I found out that Exuma used to export over 300,000 pounds of salt to England. And you yeah. have Exuma salt right, right in front yeah. of you that was able to procure. This kind of recipe we're making today, honestly, 400 years? About 400 years. <laughs> Talking about a taste of history, <laughs> that is a true taste of history. Think about it. 400 years of uh, unbelievable. So here we go. You want to pick like yes, that? Yes, big and chunky. Big and chunky, yeah. like me. Here you go. Yeah. There we go. Help me here Am I a good helper or what? Yes, you are. Okay, here we go. Now this is our pepper. It's very hot. Now how hot do you want this? Hot. Very hot. Very oh, hot. Right. Oh. Now oranges and lime always do that after you already put everything in. So you're gonna help me squeeze. We squeeze in together. How about that? You squeeze the orange or squeeze I the squeeze lime? I squeeze the lime, yeah. We... There we go. And now... I like it sweet. So the, that's what the orange does. That, that, that's why yours is different yeah, from others. There you go. I love it very sweet. So all you gotta do now is add in the salt. Just the salt. Can you tell the difference using this versus another salt and your home cooking at all? Yes, you actually can. It's very, it's a little bit more tangier, you could say. It has to make all the flavors a little bit more tangy, and you want that, yeah. especially for fish. Because people that ask to say there's so much, so much mineral yeah. around here that really reflects very in the salt. Very good for you. Okay. Very, very good all right, for you. How much salt do you put in there? Just one pinch of it. One pinch, yeah. like so? Yeah. That's it? All right. Good. Let's get our hands dirty. All right. You want to squeeze it hard, yeah. right, you said? Very hard. Like harder? Just infuse all the flavors inside. Like so? All right. Well, I'm getting a lesson. <laughs> I'm getting an Exuma Kong lesson today. You know what? You're going to be in tough luck now because now I have your recipe. I'm going to start making that myself. You never make it as good as me. I know that. Never, make it, never. <laughs> I got to come here and visit you. All right. Okay. Let's take But I heard the other day somebody told me that it's also considered an aphrodisia. That's what I was Definitely. told. Yeah. Absolutely. So, having said that, let me have some conch. All right. Naturally, the ingredients: mm -hmm. fresh conch, beautiful day yes. in Exuma, underwater, and you next to you. me. I know. Couldn't be no better. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for sharing your your family secret recipe Definitely. for us here today on mm -hmm. the Taste of History. Fantastic. Thank you. Sea salt is very common nowadays, but the Exuma sea salt is very special. Come, let me show you. This pond is known as Little Bush Pond. It's one of the ponds that uh, salt was harvested on Exuma. The tide is starting to come in now. The fresh water would come in here in this pond and it would block it off with a gate. The foam is on the surface and it would stay in the pond for a given period of time until enough evaporation took for crystallize and form the salt. The English were feuding with the French, and the French had the, the salt mines in, in Europe. They found this great source of salt to replace what they couldn't get. When this um, pond was discovered in 1670, there were no people living on the island at all. So they had to be brought in. So the labor was brought in. Yeah, it was a terrible job uh, raking salt because the sun beating down on you and the reflection from the white salt uh, a lot of people went blind, and standing in this brine all day raking salt, you'd get sores and ulcers on your feet. You didn't last long raking salt. We think of a coal mine being bad, well, yeah. salt mining isn't yeah. any, any much better. How were they transported? The salt would be brought from the pond on the seashore here in, in baskets, and then it would have to be transported to the ships. The ships would anchor off here, and the salt would have to be transported down to the ship. Some of the British ships had to be escorted by a warship to stop piracy. As you know, as many as 60 ships used to come up here, yeah. come in here to pick up the salt. And, and, this, and then you said also that salt was so valuable that you could sell it to anybody, right? Yeah, even you. <laughs> our restaurant, yeah. <laughs> the minerals that are in there, the flavor of the Sexuma salt, much better than any yeah. other salt that I've used. Yeah. So you cook with this salt? At least, let me say, when I cooked with it, I sensed it. Now maybe it's me just being so excited to be an Exuma, but I think this, this that, is... Th that could be it, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that could be it, yeah.
So we were just on the beach and I was making conch salad mature. As I told you, there are so many recipes in the Bahamas throughout for conch in many different forms. Now I'm really excited because Basil is going to show me his famous recipe for conch fritters. Basil. Oh, oh yeah. Everybody I talk to has a little secret to leave out when they tell me the recipe. Today you're going to make it, so I got your secret after that. Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, tell me what you're making. Well, what I'm here making is conch fritters, Bahamian style. In, in my own personal recipe is I chop the pepper, the thyme, and uh, the salt together. It actually helps to intensify the flavor. A lot of people don't because, you know, I mean, everybody have their own secret way of applying. There's a array of products, even the Exuma onion is, is fantastic. Okay. The finer the better. It's interesting, Chef. I we, see you we, haven't sitting in tomato paste already. We, so we, you, you incorporate a little tomato paste in your upper eye? Yes, we do. Um, tomato paste helps with the with the color. The celery rip. Yep. A lot of raw ingredients added to the bowl. Now we get it the cup. You know, it's it's very easy to understand why it tastes so good over here because this conch just came out of the water. Literally five minutes ago. Yeah, to tell you the truth, nothing really beats fresh conch. The Correct. fresher the conch, the fantastic the flavor yeah. is. So now what we do, Walter, is we add a bit of flour. You get the gluten out. We add a bit of all-purpose flour. We add some of this the salt sure and you pepper made. mix, mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. The, the secret. Yeah. Top put, secret. Yeah, you put a bit of the secret <laughs> No longer in secret it. now. <laughs> Everybody knows it. Secret is over. We add a bit of tomato paste. That's bit. first time for me. So you mix the dry ingredients and then you add a bit of water to the finish. So we add some liquid to it mm -hmm. to get it going, to turn it into a batter. So you add it some of the time. Well, you always want to be careful because oh, yeah. you can always add, yeah, yeah, but you cannot sure. take out. For sure. Right. We add a bit of baking powder yeah, for the mm -hmm. rising aspect of it. Mix it together well. You let it sit up at all or you can go immediately? We can go immediately and, and start to fry it up. Nice and hot. Man, I tell you, that was a fantastic. I bought a little remoulade along this you, you told me to, to bring because you normally eat a bit of remoulade. Oh yeah, right? definitely. So just dip it in the remoulade? Yeah, just dip it in and go ahead and eat. You, you, you fight for this one? Go ahead. No, we don't have to fight. <laughs> this is enough for, for both of us. Yeah, man. You know, you check it. The inside is sure nice. Done. Yeah. It's done. Thank you for having me no, here. No words. <laughs> no words. It's just too much to say. Man, it's fantastic. Hey, Paul, look at it. Gorgeous fish you got here. What do you have? What is we that? have some, some lane snapper, they call it. It's some local fish at the islands. What I'm about to do is... Show me. You know, we cleaned it already. Yeah. I left the, the, the tail and the fins on, so we normally chop these off because there's no use for that. And we take the knife here, pop it off here, pop it off there. Put it on the side. What we do is we score it score a, couple, it. Yep. a couple of times to get to get the flavor in. Every everywhere you go, they score it. If it ain't scored, it can't be Bahamian fish fry. <laughs> gotcha. That's a fact. Yeah. Oh, your name? I thought that had my name. Okay, we you know we put a signature on it. Yeah. What we do is salt, pepper, thyme, um, to get the season in the fish, and then what you just have to do either. You toss it or massage it some sort of way to get the, 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 the seasoning all the way to it. Which is my job right now. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. That should do it. All right. We should be in good shape and in some short order. So what we do is drench it in on both sides. Make sure it's nicely covered. Take off the excess flour. Go ahead. Go ahead, Nice fish, sunny day. I mean, who could ask for anything more? Unbelievable. When it's finished, just put it in a pan, and we get ready to eat it in some short time. How fantastic is that, man? Look at that. I hear so much about Exuma onions. Let's check it out. Hi, Alfia. Hi, Walter. How I are you? How I do you, you like my country? I'm loving it. I see you blending my favorite onion in the world. 
So onion used to be a big business here in Exuma. Yes, it really used to be. It used to be. But you know, the younger folks now, they tend to get more education. But the elderly people, that was all they did. For Plus, them. I also think there's too much work involved. It's hard work. And I heard so much about the Mixuma onions. When you tell people that they ever had an Exuma onion, they'll know the difference. They'll know the difference. How long is the entire process from the moment that you have the seeds and then the seedlings, what you're planting now until you have a full grown onion? The seedlings would take approximately six weeks, okay? Mm -hmm. From there, it would take about 90 days to reap a full grown crop. Boy, look at that. It's going to go in my salad tonight. How beautiful is that? Look at that. Fantastic. Bite into it. Right now, I'm biting into this. I want to see if it's really true how good it, it is. It is good. Tell me about it. I think I'm eating an apple. Wow. It is beautiful. Mmm. You better come out my garden Fantastic. before you eat it all up. Nobody's going to kiss me tonight, I'll tell you. But hey, it was worth it. You can imagine that. <laughs> This is a land crab, and not many, well, there's a few islands that really eat them as well, but it's very, very, very popular right here, and especially right here in Ixuma. Uh, when somebody gives a big party, you're not gonna have a party made out of crab and rice, right? Oh yeah, definitely. It must be. Well, what you do, you take the crab, you take off the fins, the small ones, mm -hmm. then you open the crab. Once you open the crab, we got the crab fat that helps to give the flavor to the rice. So we, what we're doing is we're taking out the fat, you rest it aside. We take that, because we have to now clean the crab a little bit more. You take off some parts of the crab, then you just give it a good wash. Just plain, plain water. So that's, that's your finished product. Then we get this crab and rice organized. Put in some onion, uh -huh. get the sizzle going on. Now comes the crab. Perfect. We add a little bit of bottled tomato. It's similar to a salsa. Um, we use this also on, in the island. So you put some of that. It helps with the color and add flavor. Flavor to it. Flavor to the pot. A, a bit of tomato paste. Just about a, a spoonful. So now we add the rice. What I do, as I find it, it, it comes out better when you when you mix the rice around a little bit inside the stir it up a little bit so it get the color distribution, the everything on it, the flavors, all the greens get coated, everything like that. Water. So that's the finished butter. We cover it. How many minutes we come in? And we wait. Fantastic. Right here, Chef. This is the crab and rice you've been asking for all day. Oh, 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 now you're talking. May I? Go ahead. How to describe it? I don't know, there's no butter in there. So you no. make it. it has a buttery taste. I guess it's the fat of the crab. Yes. Huh? It's just beautiful. It all blends so well together. I hope it never gets forgotten. You know, I hope it maintains itself. Those roots stay with the families. And like Shira said earlier, her recipe for her kank salad, 400 years old. Yeah. I mean, that's very important when the parents in the kitchen cooking, like now on the islands, we invite the kids to the kitchen to teach them how to cook. We keep passing information. Mm -hmm. Like we say, in other places, you can cook in the bush, you can cook anywhere. Oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> it's know? been a pleasure, fantastic day. The pleasure's been mine, by the way. Well, we gotta do this again sometime. Let's just eat some good fish, have a good time, <laughs> and call it a day. Try the fish, though, it's spectacular. Thirty-six years ago, I had my first guava duff up in Nassau. And I tell you, the first time I ate it, I said to myself, wow, who came up with this fantastic dessert? So every time, when I come back to the Bahamas, I have guava duff. <laughs> it's such a spectacular dessert that I asked Linton to come and show me behind the scenes how it's actually done, because I've never made it, I admit to that. So Linton, tell me about this guava duff of yours that I know you're a specialist in. Yes, um, guava duff is being passed down from generation in the Bahamian um, world. So today I'm going to demonstrate how this guava duff is done. Room temperature butter, get some baking powder for your rising agent. You need some sugar in it, just not too much, 
because the sauce which goes with it is very sweet. Get some milk and then you squeeze the butter, let it go through. Add the milk as you go along. And then after we get it together, you can put it on the board. Do you have any idea when first people made the guava duff? My grandmother passed it down to my mother and I saw her mother did the same thing. And you know, most of the time we used to get a duff on Fridays. And when we eat it, we somehow we get sleepy and I used to wonder, well mom, why I used to get so dizzy when I eat the guava duff? <laughs> but she said it's something I put in the sauce <laughs> to make us smarter. Did it, did it work for you? All of work for me. <laughs> this is what you get. Mm -hmm. We take the guava, just put it in the center, just wrap it, and then use to get a pillowcase. This is where the tricks come in, Walter. We never used to cook it in the oven, like how they do in the modern days. We get a pillowcase, we put it in, wrap it, and then we put it in the boiling water. And we just set it in the water. How long do you boil it for, you think? Um, about an hour. An hour, so it's a slow boil? Yes. Not a rolling boil? Yes. There's one way to get your pillowcase clean, huh? One way. So we let that sit for an hour, but the secret what used to make me so dizzy was some alcohol. So I never know until I was old enough to drink and she gave me that. You gonna take it out? Yeah, man. Okay, what I'll do is just go over and make the sauce. Yep. I just want to make sure the butter is milk. Just add a little sugar. This is a flour sieve, but we normally use it to sieve the guava. See it? Beautiful. This is the thing I find out what used to put me to sleep. A little bit of dark rum. It's good for the busy kids. Just don't overdo it, make them alcoholics. Just pour it over. Right over, oh, that's delicious. Voila. All right, on. let's try this baby here. Pour. Unbelievable. Mm. That's all I can say, mm. Very, very good. Thank you, chef. flavor of the guava. And remember also, guava was a huge industry here in the Bahamas, in Exuma especially, many years ago. It's so spectacular. Hinton, you're the best. Thank you for noticing, Chef. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I hope you enjoyed our escape to Exuma as much as I did for a true taste of history.